This is Spencer with the MacGuffin. Today I'm joined by uh, some members of the cast of Manson Family Vacation. We got Tobin Bell, and it's Linus. Is that right? Linus Phillips? Okay, I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Um, Linus Phillips <laughs> about to break into yeah. stardom. Yeah. As a result of, um, you'll it, know his name. You'll know his name quite well. This, this is an interesting project because while it's set against the backdrop of Charles Manson, it really is a family story. Um, but start, starting from the bigger picture, what was sort of your consciousness of Charles Manson heading into this, film, uh, or both of you actually? Um, because you, like me, were born after it. Tobin, you mm -hmm. presumably lived while this was all going on. I did sure you guys did. have sort of, what was your perspective heading into this project about Charles Manson and the whole story there? I don't know, maybe I got some sort of like rebel in me or, or I, I like I like to try to defend something that shouldn't be defended just as an experiment. I'm into conspiracy theories. I, I actually believe in aliens and stuff like I'm that. I'm from New Mexico. I, I yeah. can't disagree with um, <laughs> And, you know, but it, uh, so I was not into Manson at all before this, but um, the, ch the challenge, it was interesting subject matter and Jay Davis told me the idea and as soon as I hung up the phone I bought one of the books you know and started reading and uh, you know I I kind of describe it where like I turned down my my intellect uh, on the mixing board and I turned up my empathy you know I just tried to like have empathy and I think I then that way I, was, I could play a guy who felt so ostracized that he would just look up to certain aspects of Manson and stuff, um, and yeah, I mean, I which is very appropriate for the for the film for the role, yeah, yeah. And so the, and for the role, you so want to, you want to be on his your own <laughs> character's side. So it's a little funny for me to talk about because it's like a complicated topic. I'm I'm not pro Manson though, but yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I'm it's, sort of a method actor, I guess, and maybe that influenced uh, my thoughts on it. But you know, I'm. It's a complicated subject. My foray into the character was that um, he was interested in challenging his brother with his obsession with this, or, or trying to find another perspective on Manson because he felt like his the way he was portrayed in the family was inaccurate. You know, so it's like, does that yeah, make sense? It totally, it totally makes sense. And what about for All you, Toby? Right. I mean, you were alive when it originally happened. Was this something that you were really conscious of as it occurred? Was this something that you at all thought about what your experiences were like or anything when you came to this role? Like, what was, what was oh, it like for you approaching oh, this? Oh, no having... question about it. it. And it, you know, it didn't, it, it happened over a period of time. Uh, you know, there was the, the, the Tate situation and then there was the Lobianca situation and or, or maybe it was reversed next day yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah it was like and two then days, two, two days yeah. later and then the discovery of how it happened and who it was and the um, the kind of bizarre um, you know cultish kind of thing it was all over the newspapers for a year and uh, you know Sharon's uh, uh, was she was a huge Roman star. Polanski yeah, yeah she was a huge lot. star uh, and uh, her relationship with Roman Polanski and I mean it added it, it was as much in the newspapers every day as uh, you know Billy Martin and Reggie Jackson and the Yankees were all over the New York press uh, yeah. you know every day because of drama that was going on there it, sell, it sold newspapers uh, I had very clear uh, thoughts about how horrific it all was uh, and uh, so yeah, I mean, I lived through that, and uh, and uh, then eventually uh, Charlie went off and became a ward of the state uh, in 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 prison, and uh, it it receded into the background. But uh, when I uh, see this film, uh, it becomes as fresh, uh, and uh, it it takes a very f a very well known guy and brings him right into the forefront again. Does that does that at all sort of come into play in terms of like when you're getting ready to play Blackbird, you're like, these are what I remember of like the Manson family. This is sort of how I want to carry over these, I don't know, behaviors or whatever you might have seen from that. Yeah, period. no, I, I I wasn't thinking about carrying over any behavior uh, that was going on at that time. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, there's a group of young people in this film uh, living um, on what uh, it was, say, Charlie's property, uh, but uh, this is 2015. That was back in, it's a different world nowadays. I, thi I think I remember when you're, um, you know, giving input on the script and character, you were like, um, 
I think I think Blackbird was in prison, you know, and and so there, there's a big prison mentality to Manson, yeah. especially you know he's been in prison most of his life, and so besides any sort of hippie philosophies that he's had, even before he the murders and then afterwards he's he was in prison. And, you know, that's the mentality. And I feel like you were trying to tap into, like, there was, like, a, a harder edge to your character. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, he had, uh, you know, Blackbird, uh, that's probably how he met Charlie, uh, you know, in the Huskow. And, uh, um, but, you know, frankly, I mean, I, I, I really understand your question because whenever you put Charlie Manson in the title of something, you can't help but think about the family the events that happened, uh, the, the many videos that we've seen of Charlie and his demeanor. But the fact is that this film, was, and this is the most fascinating part of it, is that this film's not about him. He's the linchpin of a world that circles around his name and those events. And maybe there are similarities polarities between some of maybe Charlie's childhood and some of the, the young people who, today who feel alienated and oh absolutely you know, yeah no so absolutely I mean I, the the concept of I would say acceptance and understanding is something that very much is a key uh, mm. I don't know plot point in the movie I mean and you're it's absolutely right. No, it's by no means a, any kind of tribute to Charlie. No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't look at the, that yeah. way at all. But it's mm -hmm. sort of like it's, it. I mean, it, it could easily be any number of different things. I mean, you think about things like the Ku Klux Klan, uh, this, that, or it's, it's finding that place where you feel accepted. I mean, and it's, it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, for whatever reason, Manson has become the most uh, visible sort of. Uh, entity in terms of like ostracized kids finding a place of acceptance but mm -hmm. um, ultimately it's about family and that's sort of one of the interesting things about you know your relationship with your brother played by Jay Duplass in the movie and ultimately the family that you bring to him that is I mean it's I, I guess technically Charles family uh, but it's it's a family that's come together under the sort of same mentalities that were presented for him. What is it like in terms of, from your guys' perspective, creating those families within the movie? I mean, you're sort of torn between the two of them. Um, and in terms of you sort of setting the tone for the other second family he becomes part of. Well, it's 2015. We're dealing with a whole different group of uh, problems uh, today. Uh, the, you know, inactivity in, in D.C., uh, in the Congress, the the, uh, the environmental problems that that so I, I feel like Blackbird, although he's in the same physical location, he's moving forward and he's he's trying to do something. He's genuinely trying to. He's not planning some kind of no, uh, yeah, helter it's, skelter. Yeah, it's, it's not, like, I mean, they he, reference briefly helter yeah. skelter on the website. Right. Well, I mean, but like yeah, it's I, a different I, version of helter I think, skelter. I think people can relate to a, a similar idea of trying to break away from society because. There's a lot of scary things going on, um, environmental oh, yeah, stuff. There's an, article, there's an article today about, you know, how California is going to be out of water at a certain yeah. point. And, um, you know, and I feel like that's the, the this group is like just a little more fevered and extreme with their thinking. You know, I'm not to say that they're doing extreme things, but yeah, yeah they're living I mean, by their yeah. own, on their own. Yeah. They're, they're trying to do something different. They which, don't seem to be terribly effectual. With their, yeah. Do they? I mean, I, I'm not sure they're going to become the next National Resources no. Defense Council, but I think that Blackbird is trying to take um, a, a, a relatively lost group of young people and and move them forward on a po on a more positive plane than perhaps. Well, that's the interesting di the dichotomy of that sort of family, is though in some ways they're very specifically focused on a task, but they're also much more accepting in terms of everyone they're like if you're if you believe with us we're willing to let you in like it's 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 very accepting in that regard mm -hmm. um so what was it that you sort of approached trying to balance the difficulty in the character linus um i mean he's really tugging between these two uh sides of the coin in terms of the the Blackbird family, we'll call it, um, for practical purposes, and his brother. I mean, what was it like trying to sort of create a character that was obviously conflicted and both of them had their draws to him? I mean, he, you, you have very tender moments with your brother and you like clearly want to reestablish that relationship too. 
Yeah, well, it's sad because he really wants to be accepted by his brother, and then, or just accepted by anyone, and yeah. he's not getting that from his brother. He's he's really trying though, and they have so much history, and and there's there's a real bond and and great chemistry between them, and then it's really tragic when he starts to realize that when he's with this new group, they actually are only going to love him for the similar interests and not for who he really is. And I feel like anyone joining a group, whether it's a cult or, or less severe a situation, there's a, 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 you know, there's always that struggle. Uh, you know, you, you can't just give up your journey to find who you are. That's the whole and concept. And you have of to do that. And that's why someone would want to join a cult is well, because they think that somehow someone else is going to tell them. You're absolutely and, right. And unconditional love is a very complex own. issue. Like, like, to actually unconditionally n- not judge somebody or whatever like both both of them have their sort of strings attached to him whether it's his adopted family or this other family that's looking to adopt yeah and you get it's really a struggle to just be okay with who you are and become your own man you know so it's just um okay so uh for you tobin what was it that attracted you to this project i mean you've become an iconic horror actor in the last uh decade let's say what was it about this project that uh, creative people who knew what they were doing uh, good writers, uh, um, um, uh, not uh, producers who who weren't overreaching and then uh, unable to to produce what they were saying they wanted to produce. I knew that the Duplass brothers had a lot of experience making films, and uh, that they, um, when Josh Logan first called me and asked me to read the script, and I read it, he said these are good guys. These guys really know what they're doing, and that's what you want to do. You want to be on a team that is effective and um, has a vision has a vision of something that they can deliver. And in this case, I think they have done more than deliver even what was on the page, which was quite good. They've layered the film and made it rich, and it makes you think. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, so the film is Manson Family Vacation. It premiered at South by Southwest here. Um, future dates or anything? Is there a website where people can find out more information? Do yeah, you... it's at Ma- at Manson. Well, like in the, the Twitter handle is at Manson Film. Okay, perfect. And Facebook, yeah, Manson Film Vacation. Yeah. And uh, in terms of you guys personally, you guys have anything else you want people to keep their eyes out for that you're working on, or do you have personal Twitters or Facebooks or anything? Yeah, that Lennis people... and I are working on a film about clamors <laughs> in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, we're both from Massachusetts, and we uh, discovered that. And, I would I would watch both... that film after seeing your chemistry. <laughs> I would I want to watch that. There you go. All right. All right. We're in business. We got to do it now. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. Right. I wish you best of luck. Okay. All the best. T1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sound of stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.